this is Nancy who fixed this house and we have a hole next to the uh, light switch right here and it's in the drywall <laughs> and Don's here and we're gonna fix this together hopefully he'll do most of the work but take it away Donald all right so we got a hole in a sheetrock I really can't tell you how it happened that would incriminate someone I didn't someone who's had some anger issues but we debate about which child it was <laughs> anyway no yeah. one really cares anymore. And we also had it covered up so nobody could see it. But I figure there's plenty of people out there with holes in the sheetrock for whatever reason. Do you remember the time we got a hole in the sheetrock because one of the kid's friends was like playing and ran down the hall and ran into the end of the hallway and put his knee through the wall? Do you remember that? Not exactly, no. but I no believe names. it. And it just shows you that they happen often and we've done our fair share of repairs on them. So that's why... We're going to show you how we do it. Now this one happens to be right beside a light switch, which is why I went ahead and took that plate off. Now first thing I'll say, this is an odd shaped um, break. There's no way I'm going to patch that shape or recreate it to fit in there. We're going to have to, let's say, make it worse before it gets better. But before I show you how we do it, let me show you the tools that you will need and that I have laid out here on the table. First of all, I got a piece of sheetrock that's going to serve as our patch. Is it like 8 by 8? It's exactly 8 by 8 inches. Did you have it handy already? No, I cut it okay. in, ahead of time. <clears throat> Basically, you have to realize you got to make the hole bigger and square, and this is going to fit right in there, but we're going to cut this open to match this patch. Perfect. But, you know, the size you cut this depends on the, the hole you have to patch. All right, so watch the whole video, people. All right. <laughs> Also, I've got some like uh, fairing strips. These are 10 inches long, and I decided that I make them in it two inches longer than the patch. They're going to be what we screw the new piece into. Uh, mm, but you can use any kind of scrap lumber that you have That will fit around. in the wall, correct? Right. It fit inside mm -hmm. the space. Yep. So the screwdriver was only to remove the, the plate, <clears throat> the switch plate. Got a drill and some sheetrock screws. These Those are, are the sheetrock screws. These, these are inch and a quarter long. That's really all you need. Let me show you the front. You probably don't have to, you probably don't need this many. Number six inch and a quarter. They got the Phillips head top and this is what it looks like right there. Okay. All right. So a few other things. Pencil. Does it have to be sheetrock screw? Tape measure. Yeah. Did you use nails? No. Okay. Uh, utility knife, <laughs> which I've actually already used when I was creating the patch. <clears throat> You're going to need a sheetrock saw, something like this, because we got to open that hole and bigger. That's big, got big serrations, right? Yeah, it's nice. Okay. I got this at the Home Depot. I love this thing. It's a great saw. Beautiful. Uh, you're going to need a couple of different sized spackling knives. I've got some of the fiber mesh. I got some of this fiber mesh uh, sheetrock joint tape, a pair of scissors with mm -hmm. which I'll cut that. And I've got a bucket of all purpose uh, sheetrock joint compound. And that's from Home Depot? Any place you want to buy it Lowe's, okay. Home Depot, and they hardware come store. Small. You, you just could use a small little container, right? You don't need to have the big, huge one for small. This is way more than enough okay. for what we're okay. doing here. All right, what's next, sir? All right, so like I told you, you got to make it worse before it can get better. So we've got to cut this this hole out to a shape that's a size that's easy to patch. This is impossible to patch. And so I'm just going to put this up here. You know, it's going to go right up against a light switch like that. You know, I was getting so tired of, of seeing that thing there that I almost, I was tempted to just patch it as is. Well, after today, you'll know how to do it. Yeah. So it'll already be done. All right, so I'm going to put my patch up there, and with the pencil, I'm going to trace around it. Then I'll know where to cut out, because I want to cut out the hole the exact same size as my patch. If, if you were doing this and there were electrical wires behind that, you'd have to be really careful, correct? Of course. And I do have wires in there, obviously, because i got a switch here. But generally, wires are going to run straight up and down. Right. And this patch is loose enough that I can look in there, I can feel in there, yeah, just and be there's careful. nothing to, there's nothing to wear. But, but yeah, you're right. You gotta be or careful. you can pop that thing all the way into the wall, and then look. Yeah, good. 
and then you wouldn't. But I don't want to break it off because I want to. I want to get clean, good cuts with my saw. Okay. So I've 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 traced it out. The next step is to cut it out. All right. Now let's see if we can get a good camera angle on this. Well, it's not rocket science, but you want to cut it out right on the line, as square as you okay, can. Go ahead, buddy. And uh, yeah, you want to cut it. As clean as you can, right on those lines. Now you roll it up. Is it hard being a lefty? Well, it is because the camera is right in my armpit now. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm showing your elbow. No, it's Good. awesome being a lefty. Lefties roll. This is a left-handed sheetrock saw. It's not. Stop. <laughs> hmm. Some of your debris may fall inside the wall. Don't tell anyone. No one will know, and it won't make any difference. Palm. I need to uh, get You're okay. Way. I got it. Drill the four corners out to make it easier instead of whacking it like that. Whacking it, if I did that, whacking it, it would hurt my hand. You, you could, but it's not necessary. This comes with a point, and that ah, points okay. for that very purpose because yeah. it's, right. it's not a hard material so that you're down. penetrating. All right, so you're right about wires and stuff, and there's the switch for the stairway on the other side of the wall that I had not uh, remembered was there, but I don't think we did any damage. So we're okay. Now, be careful not to drop it inside, but you want to make sure it actually fits. Looks pretty, pretty good. Pretty good, right? Yep, nothing's back on the hide. Yeah. And <clears throat> scrape any. Should we tell people that you're a little bit fanatical about flat spackling? Perfectly. Oh, we're going to show everybody how to do it perfectly. That's, that's the point. <laughs> right. And then it takes you weeks to get it perfectly done so that you can All right, paint so I'm just smoothing right. down these edges. It's fine. It's good. It feels good. It looks good. It looks good. All right, so the next step is we got to put these pieces of wood in the back with part of it, you know, it'll be like this. Yeah. And so I'll screw through here to secure it. And then we'll put our patch on and secure it up there like that. Good. Think you um, can repaint the room for me when you're done? You know, that will be the part of the video that we're going to leave out. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, because it's grand. not going to, you're going to have to pat, touch up the paint when the job's done. So I'm going to put one up here and we'll put the other one down here. Looks great. All right. Let me hand you something. I, I don't think so. So, you know, I like I said, the patch is 8 inches, so I made these 10 inches, so it's going to overhang on all sides. How many screws do you think you're putting in? I'm going to do three across the top and three across the bottom. Okay. You know, this size patch, you don't have to put them on the sides, I, I, I don't think. It'll, it'll be in there securely enough just going across the top and the bottom. And I guess if, if you had such a small enough hole, you could just do one. Right across, like we had a little four by four inch. Yeah, you just put like one right yeah. here down the middle. Yeah, thinking. you absolutely could. I might even be able to get away with that here now that you mention it. Yeah. So you're putting three across the top. Can you use the far left one or no? Or is that the one that's compromised? I'm gonna try it right here. Off the left a little bit. So you need like what a one inch overlap? Yeah, 
half inch, one inch. Have you ever seen the technique where they, they cut the patch out and, and then cut the square out of the sheetrock, peel back the paper, and then s stick it on? Yeah, and I've done that. Do you like that? Uh, sometimes, but when you get to a... That's good, for, in my opinion, for smaller ones, but now that we're yeah, bigger, bigger, I don't... That looks nice and sturdy. Take that guy too far. I'll put one more. Just because I can. Cat wants to go out. Alright, so that's the one across the top. That's the one across the bottom. Hang on two seconds while I pick a cat out. <clears throat> Let me see your back. All right. You have two in already. There's the third. How do you feel about videos where they don't talk at all? You just watch them do the work. I prefer listening to people chatter. Me too. I, I definitely don't prefer the videos where it's simply music. Yeah, you gotta watch. Because it, it's almost always some music that's really... Uh, not your style? Not my style. It just goes that's on great. and on. All right, that one's very secure. This one I'm feeling okay about too. So that's in. Um, <clears throat> if you had the possible chance, you could uh, put some uh, glue. Yeah, construction adhesive or glue back there, just as a little extra. Um, do you have any of that? You know, somewhere I do. I'll tell you what, I do have handy. It's just wood glue. Let's try that. All right. Does wood glue adhere to sheetrock? Probably the right. Well, it's just paper. The backing True. is just paper. <clears throat> of course, I can't open it. You can do a video, kind of like your grease gun video. That was kind of funny. What kind of is? It? Does it have a round tip? There we go. I think I got it. Oh, good. All right, so. A little runny. Did you shake it? No. Hmm. All right, so that's in. Let's see if we can get a minute. Patch wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on. Okay, there's your patch. Going in. Sheetrock comes in different thicknesses. You want to make your patch out of the same thickness of sheetrock that the good wall point. is. Yeah, good point. Because if you put something too thick, one is sticking out too far. And yeah. So that would be we a usually use half inch. Yeah, most places are half most, inch. Most is half most inch. Are. How many screws are you putting in here? That one Six? didn't grab. Really? Did I go too high? Yeah, I don't know. That one work? That one's grabbing. You want to take it just, just beneath the level, just slightly countersunk, just slightly. Do you think the, uh, the use of sheetrock nails is becoming obsolete, or is it just your personal preference? Most people use screws, and right now in a sit setting like this, to be banging on nails with a hammer will make my, my supports come out. Oh, okay, yeah, true. So that would not be a good option in this case. Okay. And a few across the top.
But I mean, yeah, you can still hang sheetrock with nails. It's just not going to work very good when you're pat making a small patch in yeah. a section yeah. like this. All right, so that feels pretty good. Looks good. It feels pretty smooth at all our edges. And the combination of the screws and the glue we used will be adequate, I think, to uh, hold it in there. So that come now we come to the place where we're going to put on um, <coughs> the tape. We're going to tape all of these seams with this fiber mesh tape. This is actually FIBA tape, F-I-B-A, T-A-P-E. All right, and this is slightly adhesive, so it's going to stick to the really? wall by itself. I cut off that, that so okay. I lost some of its stickiness. Okay, didn't seem sticky to me. Now here's the deal. Don't overlap your tape. That just makes the tape layer Too thick. twice as thick. Yeah, and you'll have a bump in the wall. Right. Well, you you know we have to we have to put on spackling to build up enough to cover the right, tape. Right, right. But, you know. but if you double up your tape, then then it's twice as thick. You, you know, yeah, yeah. just makes it that much harder. So I don't want to double it up, and I'm continuing maybe an inch past each edge. And like I said, it's slightly adhesive, so it's going to stay on by itself. That's yeah, nice. <clears throat> I don't use paper tape on a patch like this. The paper tape's fine for inside corners, but on a flat surface, I love using this fiber tape. That's brilliant. Should we okay. tell him you used to have a painting business? <clears throat> well, it's not pertinent to the video, so I wouldn't mention it. It adds credibility. Ah, oh, well... It means that I had done a lot of sheetrock patching, yeah, I guess. All right, so we're now at the place where we're going to put on our first coat of spackling. All right. And you don't have to put it on thick. You just got to get that first coat on there. And <clears throat> I got three size knives, and I'm going to start with the smallest. And in 24 hours from now, we'll put on a second coat, and I'll move up to the bigger one. And then when that's dry, I might put on a third coat with this big guy. <laughs> Okay, so this is not the project that you can do in five minutes. It's, you got to stretch it out over a few days. So you have to stir that sometimes because sometimes water comes settles to the top if, and it's if, a little too thin. If you were top. using a tiny little container and your putty knife didn't fit in, would you get a smaller putty knife? <clears throat> dish it out. Something. Yeah. Okay. But again, this is a four-inch knife, and most of the buckets. This is about the smallest bucket you can get. Really. Okay. Yeah, so you're not going to have any trouble. I thought they had tiny little spackle buckets. That looks good. It's not rocket science, and it's not the finished coat, so it doesn't have to look marvelous. It just has to be on there without being built up too excessively. We're just going to seal it in there. This is our first. So it looks like you're really scraping it onto the green part to make that part flush and letting it build up a little bit on the... Looking right over it, this edge right here. Well, right now it's just about getting it on. So the, it's a little complicated because we got the switch box. If you're just doing a hole in the wall and you got all four sides, it'd be a little bit easier. So this this part is. It's you also have my also the, my other trouble is, I'm left-handed, <laughs> and this table is forcing me to. Yeah, we got a table here. My, it's our workroom. All right, that doesn't look like much. It's much better but though. But it doesn't have to look like much on the first coat. Just get yeah. it in there, we'll seal it in there, and when it dries, tomorrow we'll come back and uh, put on the next coat. Do you have any comments about the gap between the sheetrock and the box? This? Yeah, just leave it. Your switch plate covers that. So it doesn't matter. Nope, you don't Perfect. have to fill that. Yep. Um, All right. Yeah, so, you know, by the time we're done after two or three coats of spackling. Yeah, that'll look good. Um, your patched area is going to be so much bigger than the original hole. 
And that's why you end up repainting this whole wall. Yeah. Yeah. You just realize that. Especially since I don't know if we have this green anymore. I probably do, but I don't this is anymore. faded. It wouldn't, it wouldn't yeah, look right anyway. All right. Until uh, how long until it dries? Uh, 24 hours usually is enough. It could be sooner than that, but we won't be back till tomorrow. Sounds good. All right. See you then. Okay, we're back at our sheetrock drywall repair. It's actually the same day. We didn't put the mud on too thick, so it's already dry, pretty much. That one spot there looks a little wet, but it's it's fine to put on our next coat. Now I've got a piece of very thin sandpaper, and I'm not sanding. I'm just gonna lightly knock down any rough edges. I don't wanna say I'm sanding it. I'm not really sanding it. Little knockdown. What, All number, right. what number of sandpaper? No was idea. That? It's just I have no idea. Uh, 220. It was 220 when we started using it, so but I've been using that for months, so, so it's probably there's not much left to it beyond the paper. Something 220 or finer. How's that? Alright, so here's what I'm gonna do. You can see the seam, right? It's still visible. This time I'm gonna use my medium sized knife and I'm just gonna focus on the outer perimeter. Okay, I'm gonna go like this. It's kind of a big outer perimeter then tomorrow when that's dry I'll do the same thing on the inside so I'm kind of just building it up that way and then we'll do the same thing on the inside tomorrow so let's get some mud and then I got my small knife here because I'll start putting it on with that and then I'll use the big one to go over it again don't worry yet about how it's looking Okay, it doesn't matter yet. It looks horrible so far, but it takes it takes time. All right, so just uh, can you swipe the extra into the thing into the? You know what? The more you try to accomplish, the worse it will be. Now I got so less is more. Less is more. I know that is. It's counterintuitive. It's okay. Okay, so that that's Looks good. no big deal. You know, th so this took us 60 seconds to so apply that. So it's like that. fading in thin, super thin on the outer edges. Right. Uh -huh. And thicker towards the middle. Right. So this is a kind of thick build up here in the middle, but I will be filling this whole thing in tomorrow. And, you know, within three, four applications, we're going to have a nice big wide. <laughs> And I promise you, when I'm done, no one will ever know that there was a hole in that sheet rock. And why am I laughing? I don't know. <laughs> because when you, why do, you laugh? when you do a room, it takes ages. Okay, it only took 60 seconds. I, for this, it's just a small off. part. I'm, <laughs> I think it's funny. Okay, we did it. See you tomorrow. Okay, the time has come to put on our third coat of, of spackling or joint compound, whatever you want to call it. Now, I, again, I've got my 220 grit sandpaper, and I'm not sanding as much as just knocking down a few of the rough edges. That's all I need to do. Now, I'm going to fill in this middle section here. Last time, you remember, we went over the perimeter, the outer, outer perimeter. And I'm going to use the big wide knife. What is this, about 12 inches, 10 or 12 inches wide? So, I'm just going to put some in there with the small knife first. And then I'm going to take the big guy and just go over that. Two times and that's all I'm doing okay we're gonna let this dry we'll come back we'll sand it and when this is dry maybe uh, fill in one more time if we need to missed a spot I'm gonna try again all right and that's going to be about all it takes all right it's come together really nice and uh, yeah, we're almost done. All right, we're almost done with our wall patch and repair job. Can you tell it's almost Christmas? 
it's time to do some sanding and uh, I want to talk to you about how to sand it down after you put on several you know thin layers of the uh, joint compound so what I want you to know is I'm using a piece of fine sandpaper it's actually 220 grit and it's well used so it's not even uh, 220 anymore I've just so you don't want to use something medium or rough something very fine and I don't want to sand a lot I only want to sand a little bit because uh, put the mud on in thin coats I don't have big buildups you sand too much you go down to the tape that we're trying to cover up the fiber tape so I'm just going to feather in the edges that's really all we're doing feathering in the edges where the different coats of joint compound have overlapped. So you want it to both look and feel nice and smooth. Now, as I rub my hand over this, I realize that this intersection inside here is a little recessed. I still have a slightly concave section. And that's okay. I'm just going to put on another thin layer of mud right here across the middle. But just be careful about over sanding. You, you just don't want to sand more than you absolutely need to. So let me put that on. And I have the leisure of taking all the time that I want. I don't, you know, and spreading the job out over a couple of days as necessary for the mud to dry. And I'll feel like, um, yeah, I'll feel happy with the result because I'm not rushing through it. Which is also why my wife teases me about my spackling taking forever because it kind of does. All right, I think that's probably pretty good. Wow, it's going to be beautiful. So I'm going to let it dry and then we'll give it our final sanding and this job will be ready for paint. <clears throat> All right, we are just about done here. It feels beautiful. All I've got to do is one light sanding really on the perimeter. Tell you what, looks good. That's really all there is to this. And after we, uh, after we, I can say it. After we, <laughs> after we paint this wall, not one person will know, except those of us who are part of this video, that there ever was a big hole here. It looks perfect. It feels really good. And that's it. I mean. Yeah, we have to paint it. We'll get to that eventually. And you put, put that back, back up. On and You're all set. Sounds we're great. All set. Thanks for watching. See ya.